Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Lamry. Welcome everybody to Final Fantasy XIV. In today's video, I received a request to talk about the character creation in Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. Now, this is a video mostly designed for new players and players testing or thinking of trialing the game out and seeing what the game is like before they start downloading or while it's downloading still for them. So if you have a friend that's doing that, feel free to recommend this video to them. So in order to create a character, the first thing you're going to do is select a data center. That's going to be the very first thing you'll select in the very beginning of the game. Here, let me go back to the menu menu for data centers and explain the data centers a little bit more. This actually is a very nice UI that they've laid out over here. This is actually very new, came in with Stormblood to explain a little bit more about the data center locations. Now, to explain a little bit further, to clarify the first thing main players will ask is, is other data centers, are these regions region locked? Is my account going to be region locked? When setting up the Square Enix account with Final Fantasy XIV, you will have to purchase a copy for your current region. Once you finish setting up the account or in a game, you're free to choose whichever data center that you would like to choose. We have six data centers in total. Two North American data centers, Ether and Primal, one European data center, Chaos, and three Japanese data centers, Elemental, Gaia, and Mana. These data centers were set up to accommodate the amount of players that are playing on these servers, but you are not restricted to playing on your region server data center. For example, if I wanted to, I could technically head over to Elemental, Gaia, and Mana, and select those any of those data centers right now as my primary data center. Now to just click a check mark to confirm, and that's it. This is only going to determine of which server group you play with. If you set up, let's say, something like a party finder, where you set up a private party, a particular instance, dungeon, or a group, you'll be able to connect together and form groups for things like Palace of the Dead, dungeons, primals, raids, and everything like that, PvP groups, with your current data center group. For example, Primal, since I play on Exodus, I'll be able to connect with servers like Behemoth, Brainhunter, Diablos, Excalibur, uh, Exodus, my current server, Fanfreed, Hyperion, Lamia, Leviathan, Malbrook, Twintania, Ultras. Be able to set up Party Finder and join each other's parties, fixed parties that are already preset. I will not be able to join any parties on Ether, nor Chaos, or Elemental, or Gaia, or Mana if I am playing on Primal. I will be, however, able to connect with everybody on Primal. So that's to explain the basics of it, otherwise just ask your friends which server to play on or ask your friends if they're coming over from another game, let's say for example, your World of Warcraft buddies are tr gonna try this game out and maybe a couple of your World of Warcraft buddies already playing this game. And let's say they're all primarily playing on Ether and let's say they play on Balmung or Cacton, Curl or whatever. Wherever they play, go with them, play with them so it's more fun for you to play together. Aside from that, feel free to choose any data center depending on your region. Understand? Also, please be mindful of the language restrictions and language settings when choosing your data center. For example, if you go over to any of the Japanese data centers, you primarily run into Japanese speakers. They may or may not speak English, but just be aware of that. If you're gonna be playing North American data center, you'll primarily be interacting with English speakers, but you could run into Japanese players as well, or players from any other nation as well. And then in European data center, you will find different varieties of European languages. So just be mindful of that when choosing a data center and uh, go with your friends. Let me go ahead and choose mine, Primal. And this is the first thing you will do when you make your first character, when you set up your first account. Right here, you'll be able to choose your world, change your world, change your server for your data center, or choose to make new character. For today, we're talking about how to make a new character. So select new character. Create a new character. Load appearance data. Appearance data is something you'll be able to save for later. Let's say, for example, you made a really cool looking character, like I have made my primary character right here, this Mikoti, and I really like this appearance. And let's say I want to make an alt on Ether or Elemental or Mana or Gaia, and I decide that I want to save this appearance. I can, after I create the character, I can save the appearance and load the appearance back up. You will be able to, if you want to, load appearance data and select whatever appearance you want and whatever customization and save slot you apply for them. Clearly I need to clear some of them out because I don't remember which one is which anymore. But let's go ahead and make a new character without loading the appearance data. In the beginning of the screen, you will be able to choose your race. And there are six races to choose from, and five if you don't have the expansion. You got a Hewer, which are the humans, Elizen, the elves, Lalafell, the little munchkin sort of like race, it's kind of actually hard to describe them honestly, people call them potatoes, um, jokingly obviously. Then you have Mikoti, cat people, 
Rogadin, Rogadin, however you want to pronounce it, the hard burrow. I, I wouldn't exactly call them giants, but they're somewhat close to giants. And last but not least, all rather comes with the Hemsworth expansion. Each race has a male and female gender. You can look through them and see what they're gonna look like. Let's go ahead and just start off with just making a hero. Let's just go with something basic, something simple, right? Make a hero, something that's gonna be most common for people. Let's say, for example, just for the start, just for the demo, we're gonna choose the male. Before we continue, all right here on the bottom, you'll be able to see different actions you can do. You can change the pose so they can look around and do the thing, and they'll do their own little animations and loops of animation over and over so you can see what the character would generally look like. Then, if you really want to, you'll be able to apply the job uh, actions a little bit later in the future once you get to choose your class, but you can also check out small clothes in case you want to see what the character looks like in underwear. You then you have the ability to choose your environment, your background, what's going to look like, and also you'll be able to adjust time of day. Unfortunately though, currently right now we're in Ether, so time of day doesn't exist here. Let's switch to Lanotion Coastline. In Lanotion Coastline we can see what a character will look like in Lanosha. And also right there by the gear icon, you'll be able to adjust the graphical settings if you need to, if it's any frame droppy or gets kind of stuttery. Let's go and turn on character a little bit here. Let's we'll see what a character will look like in a day and at night. Let's see what they look like on this kind of a uh, background or foreground. Let's see what the locations look like as well. This is a good way to also check out what the graphics and the locations and locales of the game will look like at certain times. Let's switch over to Black Shroud of Gridania. This is a foresty looking area, it's gonna be very hard to see at night, but it looks absolutely gorgeous in midday. Absolutely beautiful area, one of my favorite places to start with, honestly. You can see in the background the city of Dania. That's what you look like, your character would look like over in the foresty area. Then you have the deserts of Thanalan, near Ulda. There's a skyscraping city of Ulda right there, where the Sultana lives and all the other Sultanes live as well. And that's what Old Da would look like, and Thanalan would look like. It's a very nice, canyony, deserty looking area with some, obviously, some greens around. If you ever played any Final Fantasy game before that has some area, you probably, you know, can be pretty familiar with it or feel familiar with it. You can even check out what it looks like in the evening, and the palace looks absolutely gorgeous at night. And the stars also look really nice out here. And since there's not a lot of trees, not a lot of buildings, not a lot of cliffs, you just enjoy the bright night sky if you want to. Alright, let's go ahead and continue with the customization a little bit more. Let's confirm our hero. Each race can... Let me go ahead and put him in a regular standing pose for now, so he doesn't move around too much. Each race has like a clan or a sub-race. And right here, before we continue, before we continue, right here you will notice that each race and sub-race will have a particular uh, stat. So let's say for example, Midlanders have Strength of 22, Dexterity 19, Vitality 20, Intellect 23, Mind 19. And let's say we select the Highlander, a little bit more rugged looking version of the Hewer. And some of them will change majorly by the appearance, like the Hewer and Midlander look completely different from one another because of their different backgrounds. These guys have Strength of 23, Dexterity of 20, Vitality of 22, Intellect of 18, and Mind of 20. The thing is though, these stats don't really matter at the end game whatsoever. If you want to min-max, you can if you want to, but really at the end of the game, these stats would not make too much of a difference. This was a feature that was introduced before as like a racial stats in patch 1.0 for the game. And rather than deleting the system or breaking the game, they decided to just continue keeping it here, although it has very little value over towards the end game. So it's not gonna affect your DPS. How you play your class will affect your ability to tank, heal, and DPS. Racials will not matter. You also don't have any active abilities like you would in World of Warcraft. So, pick whatever race you really want, whatever one looks fancy. This guy looks kinda cool, let's choose Highlander. For the male options, you have things like height, muscle tone, skin color, hairstyle, hair color, face, jaw, eye shape, iris size, eye color, eyebrows, nose, mouth, lip color, facial feature, tattoo, tattoo color, face paint, face paint color, and voice. I believe the only difference between males and female selection is the females get a, let me go ahead and make sure it's correct here, get a bus size. And that's about it. You can make it big, small, whichever one you prefer. 
Let's go back to the male for now and continue with just the basic explanation of the appearance setup. Height will determine your height, obviously. Muscle tone is muscle tone, how muscular your character will look. By the way, this is something you might want to set in the beginning. The only thing you can really set, unless you buy a particular potion, Fantasia potion, which will let you change the entire character's appearance and race, you will primarily be able to customize hair, uh, hair cut, hair color, uh, accessories for the face, like tattoos and stuff. So you really want to take your time through this character customization option. So you can choose muscle tone if you want to, skin color, you can do hairstyle, and there are a lot of hairstyles to choose from from the very beginning. If you want to, you can even go with something crazy like this, which looks absolutely fantastic and awesome. Some of the hairstyles are a reference from previous Final Fantasy games and previous characters. We'll go with, uh, go with, we'll give our buddy, uh, what can we give him? We'll give him this. That looks pretty cool. I like that. Looks pretty good. Let's go with hair color, you can choose different hair colors and choose highlights if you really want to make character look specific way. I kinda like this, that looks pretty cool actually, as is. Change different face. Facial customization is not exactly broad, but the tiny details you can add to the face will make a difference. You can choose this face, this face, this face, and this face. I think I'll stick with this face for now. Seems like a, seems like a pretty rugged, kind adventurer. Then we got the jaw, you can customize the jaw a little bit to make it as wide as you need to be or as long as you need to be. Yeah, the eye shape will determine how your character will look and sometimes may change the appearance of your character entirely. Iris, make it small or large, it's up to you. Eye color, you can do odd eyes if you want to, get a little bit creative. Let's say for example somebody makes a purple eye and a green eye, or turquoise eye, whichever one you want, honestly, it's really up to you to determine which kind of eyes you'd like to have for your character. Uh, just to be extra creative, let's just go ahead and go over like a... Um, one amber, one brown. Yeah, that's that. That's alright, that's fine. We can go with that. You can choose different eyebrows. And for this one, you mostly don't have much of hair on the eyebrows, so it changes the formation of the eyebrows. You make character really look fur-browed. A little more serious. You can look even more laid back like this. I make it more look fur-browed, more adventure, bad already. Change different nose however we need to. Change the mouth. Mouth shape may not look as much different if you have a beard over here, but it's not that big of a deal. Lip color can be changed and you can put on dark or light, depends on how you want to customize the character. You can do different facial features. Let me go ahead and turn them all off. So this is the character, how it would look like without any facial features at all. Facial features are like this facial hair, the mustache, the scar, can be other different accessories for male and female and different races might have different accessories as well to customize with. You can do tattoos if you want to. Customize that. Change it to two color if you really need to. I'm gonna go ahead and make it. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it white. Why not? Why not? It kind of matches the hair. You can choose different face paints if you want to. Get like a dragon tattoo on the side, a heart if you really want to. Anything your heart desires, really. Just go ahead and customize whatever you need to do for your character. And then you can choose your character's voice. And different customizations for your voice. Let's say, for example, we select voice say eight. Okay, so that's how a character will sound like when he is angry. All right here, you can choose different emotions. This is gonna be <laughs> a cheer voice, and I can see that actually doesn't fit the character as well. I need to be a little bit lower. Let's go with six. Okay, that sounds kind of good. We'll go with that. Let's see how the character sounds when they're laughing. That's kind of cool. Let's see what they look like or sound like when they not agree, when they disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you customize whatever you want for your character to sound like. The voice options are pretty extensive for males and females. Let's go ahead and confirm it. Save appearance data. If you want to save appearance data and apply it to other characters or just want to save it for the future, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to go ahead and not save mine. going to skip out on that. Then you can set up your calendar. This is just flavor text, which means you set up when your character was born. I do not believe this affects any part of your character. Then you got the hello and different deities you can choose as your or for your character. Different deities will come with certain elemental attributes and like the stats, these things are going to be practically null and void. For the most part, you will have equal resistances across the board. This was just a feature that was left over in patch 1.0 and rather than removing it and breaking the tie game, they decided to just keep it there and make it null and void. So this is mostly here for the flavor. 
But if you want to play some sort of a lore related character or RP character, you can choose, let's say for example, we say that this character is from Land of Alamigo. He came here to be an adventurer and I guess Alamigos are more attuned with Rogger, so we'll choose Rogger for him. Why not? Something lore related, something to customize your character. Think of him as Zodiac signs. Then we get to choose our class. Your class will determine your starting city, and you'll be able to see your starting city right here. For example, the Gladiator class, right here that we selected from the start, is gonna start in Uda, the city right here. That's where we're gonna be starting as a starting city. Each class will determine which starting city you'll be in. And if you want to check out what your class will look like as a job once you get to level 30 and see what the armor will look like, the artifact armor, you can get a nice preview of what the armor would look like. This is what Paladin would look like. Its starting class is Gladiator and eventually it turns to Paladin at level 30. At around level 50 you are able to obtain this armor. Pugilist, or turns to a Monk, will look like this. They are fist fighting class, you can choose from if you really want to, and they also start in Ulda. Marauder are tanks. They turn into warriors and become more of a DPS based tank, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's actually pretty accurate. They're highly specialized in doing damage and not too much onto tanking, but they're still recognized as tanks within the game. They can do an incredible amount of damage once you get to the end game content, and for the most part, they'll be doing a decent amount of damage throughout the game. It's up to you to select which armor you want. But this is what the warrior would look like with their level 50 artifact gear, if you want to collect that. Then we have Lancer, which would start in Gridania. Let me go switch over to Gridania. Lancers have the ability to upgrade into Dragoons, which are just translated as Dragonites, specialists that wield spears and polearms, mostly just spears for the most part. You'll be wielding primarily a spear at the end of the game, and you'll be using jumps in order to combat enemies. While Dragoons specialize in fighting dragons and combating dragons and countering dragons, you'll still be able to use your skills to counter other things. Then we have Archer, which eventually upgrades to a Bard. And you can see even the fancy harp built into the, the bow right now. Bards are support range melee DPS, and they are actually really good when it comes to being members of the party. They have bring a lot of utility to the party and have a pretty sizable toolkit at level 70. Then you have Conjurer, which is the starting healer class that you'll be able to choose, but it's not the last, but it's not gonna be the final healing job. Conjurers upgrade eventually to white mages, which primarily heal and focus on healing magic and healing over time. Then you have Thaumaturge, which start off also as well back in Ulda. Thaumaturges are wielders of ice and fire and thunder magic and some, I guess you can call them void magic. I haven't fully figured out the full elemental capabilities of a black mage myself. I'm not a huge black mage lore buff myself, unfortunately, but the wield primarily ice, fire and thunder at the very beginning and can eventually be upgraded to black mages to wield even more powerful spells. And at the end of the day, you also can choose Arcanist, which start in Limps and Aminsa. Arcanist start as a DPS, but have the ability to select themselves as a DPS or a healer once you select your job. Arcanist can eventually be upgraded to a summoner that uses battle pets in order to deal damage, or into a scholar that uses healing and support pets in order to heal and support allies. They're primarily seen as a healer, but that's the versatility of an Arcanist. Each class comes with its own challenges, it's easy to learn, but it's hard to master. Choose which one strikes your fancy, which one is striking your fancy part of the flavor text or part of the starting area, or if you like the armor that you look here. And this is just a level 50 armor. If level 50 armor is not the only thing you wear at the end game at 60 and 70, your gear will change and upgrade. And there is a glamour, sort of like a transmog system, that allows you to also like a like a wardrobe, wardrobe system, I guess I can say if you play Guild Wars 2 ever, that allows you to change your character's appearance to almost virtually anything you want. It will be locked, however, to classes that you may already already be part of. Let's say, for example, I play a warrior. I can glamour or transmog or wardrobe myself to look like a wearing any other piece of warrior armor. I cannot, however, make myself look like a paladin because it's role specific. It's not going It's not role specific. Sorry about that. It's job specific. But any warrior gear, if I play as a warrior, is um, anything goes pretty much. Nevertheless, once you select your character, you've selected Malboro as your starting world. Proceed. You can choose either yes or select another world. If you choose to select another world, 
It will first of all show you about the data centers and everything. At the moment, the servers that are available are Marlboro, Brynhildr on Primal by the way, Famfred, Exodus is finally open, finally, Lamia, Diabolus, Behemoth, Ultras, Hyperion, which is North American Legacy, which is part of 1.0 uh, servers, Excalibur, which is currently locked and not accepting any more players, and Leviathan, which is also currently locked and not accepting any more players. After that, you select whichever server you want to play on. Let's say, for example, I select Exodus, and I click Confirm. Then you choose your name for your character. Let's say, let's go ahead and randomize. Waldemar Wyman. Sure, that works. That's fine. Character name cannot be used. <laughs> Never mind, somebody already used this one. Arcavius Wyman. Cannot be used. Everybody uses this. Ragnfred Wyman. Cannot be used. Mr. Warrior Face. Mr. Warrior Face has been created. Begin the game with this character. You can usually say yes to get right into the game. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out. There is Mr. Warrior Face. And I'm able to get into him and play as him if I really want to. I don't need to make an alt, but if I ever decide I need an alt on a different server, I will see if I can recreate the same appearance, because honestly, he kind of looks pretty cool without the mustache, the beard, and the face paint looks kind of neat. Nevertheless, y'all, this is the character creation process and character creation for this game. And remember, you can't access the aura race unless you have the expansion. If you have the expansion, you should be able to access the aura race. If you purchase Stormblood, you automatically get Heaven's Word with it as well. It just comes as part of a bundle, since Heaven's Word is kind of an older expansion. But nevertheless, this is the character creation process. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, it kind of came out kind of long. Had to make sure I'm as detailed and punctual as possible with this, with everything going on here. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed. My name is Stan Riel. Like, subscribe, and as always, have a good day. And I'll see you all next video or whatever I make with Mr. Warrior Face, maybe. <laughs> anyway, see ya.